stopping by. Well, I hope you get a project together because what I'm doing is talking while I stitch. And so if you have some stitching to do, that would help. I wouldn't fe feel so guilty about ignoring you while I'm stitching. <laughs> I am working hard on getting this uh, facing tacked down on the hugs quilt. And um, I am I'm doing good though as far as a uh, timeline goes. Uh, I like to sit here. I'm sitting on a little, the little footstool of um, my stitchy chair here in the beehive and I have the quilt on the bench that belongs to the table that's in the middle of my uh, beehive where girlfriends can come and stitch. Uh, the Interestingly enough, so if you ever go to buy a dining table and you know they say, oh, you can fit more people if one side is a bench, just so you know, that bench is not comfortable for people our age. Maybe if you could put the grandkids on it, but without any back support, nobody wants to sit on this bench. They all want to sit on the chairs. Uh, but the bench is great for laying a quilt out so that you can um, tack the binding down without having it in your lap when it's a uh, warm weather and um, not shifting it around you just keep moving down and and tack the facing or the binding down so how have you been how have you been been getting a lot done that much huh I'm, I'm, I'm working hard. As you saw at the beginning of this uh, um, segment, I am working on my collage octopus. It is a birthday present uh, that's coming up in September, and so I want to get it quilted and done. So I have to finish the collage part. And I, it's kind of interesting because in the actual design, uh, it's a uh, Laura Heine um, collage. Uh, she does a lot of layering and collaging of fabric, just a lot. And when I took the class at the Stitch and Post in Sisters, I thought I was pretty much done because I didn't like it as congested with collage as the pattern was. But when I brought it back out uh, and looked at it, I thought, Oh, we could just use a little bit more. And isn't that the way with collage quilts? You think you're done, and then you think, oh, wouldn't it be funny to add this fabric or that fabric? So once I put it out on my ironing board, I have been cutting out fabrics and fusing them on. It's a, a totally fused project until you quilt it. And I'm going to quilt it similarly to how she, the designer, quilts a lot of hers. Because I've uh, been to her booth at Market, and um, she does a lot of straight or squiggly gridded stitching, kind of tight. And um, so I, I'm going to do that same thing, because it's going to be a wall hanging. And it's not ever going to be washed. You know, I'm going to face it. Um, into a wall hanging and I'm really excited I'll have to show you when I I'll actually um, when I get to the quilting part of it I'll just show you what I've done I did get on to um, the internet almost couldn't figure out that word uh, I did get onto the internet and finally succumbed to ordering some fusible batting. I was getting way low, so low, and um, I took a wrong turn. You know, that happens a lot. I, I get lost a lot, and I took a wrong turn and somehow ended up on 87th and 102 in Portland, and it was down in the neighborhood where Fabric Depot used to be. And I know some of you know about Fabric Depot and 
the ones that don't, thank goodness you don't, because you'd be grieving with us that do. Uh, it was an old Kmart store, so you know how big it was. And it literally had everything that a sewer, crafter, quilter could want. Upholsterer, wedding, um, every line of quilt fabric there was, all ki a whole wall of different kinds of batting. And I used to buy all of my batting from them. And then in, I think it was 19, was it 19? I think the father passed away and the kids decided not to keep it going. I think that was the story. I could be wrong, but it closed. And it was such a loss. It was such a loss because if you wanted big bulk items, that was where it was like the Costco of quilting. The Costco of quilting, yes. So I broke down this week and mail ordered some batting because uh, I knew that I'd be, uh, I would need some bigger pieces. If I can just stay off of the So Yeah Brothers site, I got a shipment in from them. You know, we no longer call it a, a mail order. It's a shipment when it comes from So Yeah. But I, I got real excited a couple weeks ago when I ordered. Um, and so I got a whole pack of Halloween, because you know how I am about Halloween. And what got me was this piece, this, um, it's vintage Halloween. It's a vintage Halloween, but it's a whole half yard pack. I think it's half yard or maybe it's yard pack of Halloween fabric. See, I'm doing like Brody and showing the fabrics. That purple donut looks really good though. Yeah. So I got that pack because I know there's going to be a Halloween quilt in my future. And and then I just couldn't pass this up because I know that I have to prep some projects for our retreat in September. Oh, I have got to send a check to my girlfriend. She probably thinks she's, uh, I am riding on her coattails. Oh my gosh. Anyway, when they showed this panel, I thought I am definitely getting that panel because um, I know my older grandson would just get a hoot out of it. Um, so if you know what steampunk is, it's kind of a blend of um, industrial and uh, 1800s together. Um, there's a video from 2019 if you if you Google Quilt Roadies Steampunk Tucson, uh, G and I took the Quilt Roadies to the Steampunk Convention, which was held in Tucson, and it really gives you a sense of what that community is like. They're very artistic. They uh, make their own costumes, and the costumes are not only cloth, but they're mechanical. It is, it was, I'm so glad. In fact, it was, um, no, it was in 2020. So just Google that to watch that if you're new and haven't seen it already. You know why I know it was 2020? Because I remember at the time there was conversation about that virus that was, um, uh, in China at the time and was they had discovered that some of it had migrated and I remember telling G I don't know if I'm comfortable I mean this is with the very beginning I don't know if I'm comfortable going to a crowd and that was way before you needed to wear a mask or you know it was just the idea you know 
I was a nurse and the two areas I worked in you were always in scrubs you always had masks you had war gloves and so um, the I was already a germaphobe <laughs> so you can imagine what I am like now I'm that person that has the the bottle of hand sanitizer in the purse and it carries around wipes and my, when my grandson touches anything uh, I, I'm like wiping his hands off I wipe my steering wheel off <laughs> I know but you know that was who I was, that was who I was trained to be. And um, so I remember when we went to that steampunk convention that I had some reservation. You know, it wasn't really on G's radar other than what I had been telling him that I read in the news. And um, it was going to be people from all over the world coming there for the convention. And, um, and that was pre pre-mask, pre-washing your hands. It was just me having read what was going on and knowing that people were coming from all over and wondering if we should have gone. But we went, and I'm so glad we did. It was a hoot and a half, let me tell you, just a hoot and a half. And it was held at the at the Wild West place in Tucson where they had movie sets from the old um, uh, Western TV shows, you know, they filmed them there and you know, I just love Tucson. It is such a fun, fun town. Just a fun town. You know, and I reminisce so much about all the travels. I cannot wait until we can really feel comfortable traveling and um, enjoying ourselves in that same I don't know if it will ever be quite that same laissez-faire attitude, but uh, I don't know. I know that I'll be going to North Dakota because that, the person who sends me all these sea suckers, I decided on Cafe Latte today, um, is moving to North Dakota. And I don't, is there a seas in North Dakota? Let me know, because I'm kind of worried that my supply, my supply chain is going to be dried up. I'm still stuck on polar seltzer, orange vanilla. <laughs> you know why? Because it tastes like those orange uh, popsicles with the cream in the center. Yeah. I watched a TikTok. But look at me running on and on and on. Um, reminded me of something my dad used to say. Anyway, do you know that in, in first grade I sat most of the year with tape on my mouth? Ooh, a gust of wind blew everything off of my sewing table except for the machine. Oh, but the breeze feels good. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, I spent most of my first grade with tape on my mouth. It's how I ended up in Catholic school. My parents just couldn't take it, couldn't take all the restrictions. You know, they both were. They both walked to a different drummer, so just because their daughter did, you would think someone would appreciate that. So off to, I got pulled out of that school lickety split. Anyway, back to steampunk. When they showed this panel, I thought, dang, you know, I kind of want to watch the, the So Yeah um, live for the sheer entertainment. And let me tell you, it is entertaining because you can't believe, I mean, it seems like everybody knows everybody, that the regulars that come there. And every so often, depending on where they're at, they'll do something different. Like, um, I forget where they were, where they were selling, uh, repurposed. Did I tell you this already? What is my one girlfriend says that her daughters go like this when she's repeating herself? Um, anyhow. Anywho. They were selling repurposed uh, featherweights. The guy at the show they were at 
was uh, does um, car colors. You know, like he uh, gets the featherweight, he repurposes it, fixes it all up, and then he paints it. Um, and so they were selling those by, not like they sell their fabrics. This was actually an auction on the live. I'm not kidding you. I almost had to go get myself a drink because um, when it finally came done, I think, if I remember correctly, that featherweight, cherry red, which is what I have, cherry red one, went for like $3,600. I mean, it was like I kept jumping up and down from my chair. You know, it's like you get nervous when someone's like, oh, oh, like at bingo when they're calling the numbers and, and you see someone's only missing one and you're like, nervous for them and then when they call that final number and they get to s jump up and yell bingo that's the way i was feeling when i was watching that but the other side to this is when you watch it it's so easy to get sucked into the regular buying and so when they showed this panel i said oh my gosh i have got to have it it's steampunk, and I'm going to cut it up and use it in a quilt for my grandson. Is that not hysterical? Look at this octopus down here. You must think I have a thing for octopus. And you're right, I do. <laughs> so I have to make him a, like a TV throw or something for Christmas. You know, I'm going to do something. But I'm going to do it at retreat. Because this will be a simple one. You know, I'm just going to cut out the, the squares and um, and then do something fun in between. So then I had to get some complimentary fabrics to that panel. And they had this line of fabrics. And let's see, let me tell you who this is by, because someone will ask. This is Desiree'sDesign.com for QT Fabrics. So if you're interested, you got to remember that. And you got to go on to So yeah, is in Las Vegas. So if they have it, but it's yeah, www.qtfabrics.com. Well, the three other pieces that I bought were so awesome and and made sense. You know, they made sense. So here's the three other pieces, and they are all gears, like the inside of clocks or machinery, and um, they are so awesome. And they're by the same fabric company, QTFabrics.com, Desiree's Designs. And from what I understand, what I learned that day, which I'm really worried about, is that that Desiree is designing a steampunk Christmas line. These designers have just got to stop. They have got to stop. You would think that because we have had a year of desert in quilting, no quilt shows, very few classes, that we wouldn't have um, sunk a small fortune into fabric, but not true. Not true. And then Stacy West, who is the designer extraordinaire of Buttermilk Basin, sent me August's Year of the Gnomes. And is she not the cutest thing? Oh my gosh, she's so cute. I'm going to have to get a little tree 
and decorate it with all the gnome, uh, little gnome ornaments. I think I might be missing January. That's so weird that I don't have January. But, but I'll get it. Um, yeah, because I have plans to go to Stacy's shop in October. Um, if all goes well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to oh, I've got to start stitching. Have you got your stitching together? I've got to start stitching. I'm here. I'm just blabbering away and not getting anything done. Yeah. The real key to facing, to creating facing, is that extra little eighth inch line of seam line that you do after you um, have uh, done the quarter inch seam attachment. Then it makes it just kind of roll over. But if you um, Google quilt roadies facing a quilt, I tell you step by step how to do it. I hate repeating myself. Seems like it would be boring. Although I have gotten um, several requests about um, showing how step by step my wool, so I might have to do that. I might have to do that again. Everything, you know, every quilt. The thing about um, wool is any pattern that you have that's like needle turn applique can be a wool quilt. It can become a wool quilt. And I specifically am thinking right now because so many people are doing that, um, the Raven quilt that was designed by Blackbird Designs. It was a needle turn, it was just gorgeous. And I know um, a couple people I know are actually doing the needle turn right now. But uh, I saw one where the creator just took the needle turn applique and cut out wool pieces. Why not? Gives it a whole different look. Gives it a whole different look. I swear the crows around here have been going crazy. They must sense something in the air. They've been just going crazy. It's beautiful today. It's beautiful. And we've been so lucky because the way the wind comes through Happy Valley, um, we haven't had any smoke. It, no smoke, which is awesome. Just awesome. I got really disgusted, just disgusted with the news. I mean, I know I hear a lot of people say that, but I was just disgusted with the news. I said, you know, it's like, it's like sometimes they just want to make everyone scared or feel bad. And I rarely waste any energy getting pissed off, you know. I'm going to just say it like it is. Just, I was just ticked off and I, so much so I told G, I said, can you imagine? I mean, really? Okay, I'm blathering. But, so apparently this very sad thing happened in which, um, you know, Portland has really suffered in the last year. I mean, national news, when you look at Portland compared to a lot of other cities, it was suffering the same way everyone else is, but for whatever reason, whatever, whether it's because it's considered a blue city or whatever reason, the news just focused on the shootings and the riots and the crime and, you know, and that kind of stuff was going on all over. But every night you could guarantee that Portland was in the news. And so here we are, working hard as a community to pick ourselves up, to 
remind people what a lovely place it is. And this poor sheriff, you know, and the police, oh my gosh, it is so hard to be a policeman right now. Um, this poor sheriff was um, shot and it just breaks your heart, you know, because that that is just, you know, it just breaks your heart. And there were there were three people they were looking for. I mean, you can tell I don't even have all the facts in my head. I only kept the fact that really ticked me off. There were three people they were looking for, and and this all happened in Washington State, mind you. In Vancouver, which is a big city, across the river from Oregon, on the other side of the river, in a different state. Did I say that? In a different state? But it was reported on the national news that... The sheriff was killed, and they were looking for three shooters who shot him in Vancouver, a suburb of Portland. It's like they had to attach it to Portland. Vancouver is not a suburb of Portland. It is a city in Washington state. I, I just, you know, I was so disgusted with the news. I was just so disgusted. You know, it's, um, to, to take this horrible tragedy and twist it somehow. Yeah. Okay, that's the only rant you're going to get out of me today. I refused to, to spend another moment I think, I think the person who's going to be getting this quilt is going to love it. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah, I think I have about... I'm going to take about three, you know how you're looking at the back of my head because I'm looking at my stash. I'm hoping to take three quilts with me to retreat and then um, some stitching. Yeah, I need to work on some stitching. girlfriend coming to visit this week for a couple days. I can't wait for that. That means lots of sewing time. So, so beautiful. So beautiful outside. It's probably about, I guess it's probably 80 right now. I got this new alarm clock that actually tells me the temperature in my bedroom and the humidity. Yeah, our air conditioner isn't working very much. We got someone to come work on it and um, uh, we have a little fan going in there at night. But. Uh, there's a nice, I don't know if because Mount Hood is right there, it, but the wind from this side of the house blows. So if I open windows on this side and I blow open windows on that side, I get this nice breeze. Oh, so lovely. I think I 
need to start sewing more. How about you? I have to sew more. I mean, I, I'm going to be layering up. I might, I, hey, I might actually take on retreat. Retreat's not till September, but I might actually take um, a couple of, like, I have a couple of table runners or wall hangings. I can actually take those and um, quilt them on my sewing machine. I don't need my Sweet 16 for those. I'm going to, it's going to be one of those retreats where you don't get out of your pajamas and you just stitch till you get, you have to sit on a donut because you sat too long. Yeah. That's when you know you've been stitching too long. <gasps> so have any of you ever done a collage quilt? That was my first, that was my first one. And let me tell you, it's, um, Although I don't paper piece, it reminds me of paper piecing in the way that you, when you're making a collage quilt, you make a humongous mess. Absolutely humongous mess. And um, you think it's using up scraps? Nope. No, you got just as big a pile of scraps and craziness is all get out. Yeah. The back of this is that sign language fabric. I don't know who this is by. I cut the the thing off. But, oh, I just love it. people walking. I need to get on with my hexes too. I need to get working on hexes. Maybe I'll make a hexie this afternoon. I'll stitch one. Almost at the end. Almost at the end. And then I have to sew the next strip on, the two side strips on, so that I can um, fold those over. And then I'll have all four sides down. And then it'll be a matter of just uh, making a label. That will be so fun to have this done. Because, um, yeah, it's got to be done this week. No two ways about it. Yeah. I'll be able to do it, especially since I sit here and talk to you. I mean, there's no better way to, to get a project done than when you're talking to your friends and you know that they probably are stitching too. We all encourage each other, huh? Okay, thanks for hanging out. And wish me luck on my collage quilt that I get that done. And hopefully the next video I'll be quilting it, which would be really awesome. Really awesome. And then I'll have my pile of um, I'll have my pile for a retreat. See, I just kind of kind of had a little bit of a brain fog where it went to retreat and oh what I need to do and so many fun things 
Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Take care. Be kind to yourself first. And remember, what did they say? Put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help the person next to you. That's what I'm talking about. You guys take care. And we are doing well here in Oregon.